You have to recognize that there are many products out there that are everyday occurrences, but yet have a chemistry relationship. And so what we're going to do today is to look at something like this sheet of goldenrod paper. Now, you have to recognize before you try this that not all goldenrod paper reacts like this. So before you try this, make sure you're getting a sample that does work. But I have an ordinary set of goldenrod paper that has not been treated. And what I have here is a spray bottle of household ammonia. What I like about the spray bottle is it's a pump bottle and you can pump it to help do the spray. But let's see what happens when I spray household ammonia on goldenrod paper. It turns red. So now we have a chemical reaction, something that you can put and individualize in your classroom, and you've got to make it your own. So what could we do with this? Well, I don't know if you know this, but I am the Midwest spray bottle champion, and I have some unique talents. Let's see what happens. If we go up to the board here, I'm going to use my talents and spray in a particular way. Watch what happens. You can see that I sprayed certain parts of the paper, and by adjusting the nozzle, it didn't spray other parts. And we get the word chem up there. Now, in fact, what we have to do is recognize that you're in a course that is going to be fun, but it's also going to be challenging. So let's just try this. What else can we do? Let's try that talent again. Chem is... I don't want to ask you for some ideas of what chem is, okay? We're going to formulate those this year, but chem is what? Chem is try, and that's what chemistry is all about. You have to try. Now, the goldenrod and ammonia, let's think about this. What's happening? As I said, this is not treated paper, but what happens is there's a certain additive in here to give it that goldenrod color. And it's like the spice turmeric or turmeric. And what they've done is impregnated into the paper and you get that color. That's why I said you have to be cautious because some brands have themselves called goldenrod, but they don't have the turmeric in there. So it's a slightly different color. But now what could I do with this? And where do I use this in my classroom? I have trouble learning student names. And so, our school requires a lot of paperwork the first day. And so we have to do that. But I want them doing chemistry right away. So I give each of my students a sheet of goldenrod paper with specific instructions. And I say, take the goldenrod paper home and make a solution. Now I'm very non-descriptive about the solution. All I'm going to say is it's going to involve water and baking soda, such as Arm & Hammer. And I show the students the box, Arm & Hammer, just in case they don't know what we're talking about. I have some samples of Arm & Hammer baking soda, just in case the students might not have some at home. So they have everything they need. But what they're going to do is take the goldenrod paper I happen to have a solution of baking soda here. Now let's think about that. We've got baking soda in here. Ooh, what's happening up on the board? While back, it was completely red. Do you see some of the red disappearing? Now what could be causing that? Well. If we go back to the ammonia, that's household ammonia. And what ammonia is, is really ammonia gas and water. And so what happens when we spray this, the water is going to get on the board, the paper, and ultimately that water will evaporate and the ammonia gas will dissipate out to the air. So once again, it's a basic environment that's going to turn it red. But in this case, the red is disappearing. And so then I could use this for my next period. This is not permanent. But for this assignment, 
I want something that's permanent. That's why they're using the baking soda. So what they have is a full sheet of the goldenrod paper, and I just have them fold it in threes to make a name tag. And what I'm going to do is have them at home make a solution. I'll show you what I'm going to do with a Q-tip. I'm just going to have them write their name. And you have to warn them to do a little projection ahead. If their name is Jonathan, and they're writing Jonathan, and they're at the end way over here, they haven't thought ahead, okay? But what they're doing is, the assignment is this. They have to first create a name tag that they're going to bring to class the next day for a grade. And so I will be able to see the finished product, and I will know if they used baking soda. Some students will try baking powder. It won't work. Now, let's look at this. Is this turning red? Red, just like this up here. But in this case, this is a base that's dissipating. This is baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is really a basic salt. And what's going to happen is they have a permanent name tag that you can use as long as need be until you learn the student names. And so the first part, they're supposed to make the name tag, but the second part on a sheet of paper to be turned in for a grade, they have to write all their observations. And so what you're trying to do is to develop a chemistry approach where they are starting to make observations. And so I'll get a sheet of paper in the next day, and I'll get a page and a half to maybe two lines. And it's interesting the things they'll say. They'll say, well, I added the baking soda, and it turned red. I can see that. So here's what they've done. This is from their interpretation. I could interpret that's what they're saying. What we're trying to do is to get the student to write observations that another observer, even though he or she has not seen it, could understand what they have talked about or what they did. And so we will talk about the use of pronouns. Well, what is the it? It's the letter that turned red. And so you're going to try to get the student to detail and be a little more detailed in their explanation. Now, up here, ooh, it's almost disappeared. I really have to tell you the truth. I am not the Midwest champion. How did I do that? What did I do with the paper? I used tape, just regular tape, and tape the letter. If you want, you could use a candle and use the wax to seal it down. Or if you want to make something detailed like that, you could use a candle. But once again, you're getting the student to work. There's just another little twist that you can do that I think is interesting. For that, I'm going to move over here. And since we're dealing with some concentrated chemical, I'm going to use some latex gloves. And what I have is a plastic container that has the lid cut out, and I have a sheet of goldenrod paper on there, and I have something underneath. Now, how did I make that? I took the plastic, I took a flask, and heated it in a Bunsen burner flame, and as you can see, underneath, by heating the Bunsen burner, the flask in the Bunsen burner, I was able to just melt part of the plastic right in there, and it just made a perfect fit. And for a 250 milliliter flask, it's exactly the right size. Because what I have here is a bottle of concentrated ammonia. This is very dangerous. I would make sure that you as the teacher only do this and don't let your students do it. But what I'm going to do is open this and see what happens. 
We'll put that right on there. And you can see, I just did this. And this is a little more difficult. What I had to do is, and I'll show you in a minute, is it pretty much done? I think so. I'll just take this off, be very careful pulling it, and I will cap the ammonia bottle. But let's talk about it. Where did the red start forming? At the top or the bottom? Did it start at the top and just work on down? What's that saying about the ammonia gas that's forming? There's all kinds of different approaches you can take to this and get the student thinking. Once again, that's what you want to do in a chemistry class. You want to teach them the chemistry concepts, but you also want the student to think. And so with this, as I said, let me take this off. I had to on the back, right backward, whatever I was going to put on there. And so, were you able to see? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, turn on the fan. So, I had to write backward in tape what I was going to see. And then I just put it on the bin and put it on the concentrated ammonia bottle. Now what's nice about this is I will be able to just, as you can see, the color is dissipating and I will be able to use this again and again and again. So this is just one avenue you can do to get your students excited. And in fact, I have students that will do the activity, but then they'll say, well, that's interesting. And they'll do their own experimentation. They will try different colors of paper. And that's what you want to do. You want to develop with your student that experimentative approach, that investigative approach that you're going to do in an inquiry type of class. So try this activity. It works great with a student and a great way to get their name down. Thank you much.